Welcome to another Striper Season Update brought to you by West Marine. The Stripe Bass have settled into their summertime rhythms, so up and down the Striper Coast, now is a great time to be on the water, especially as we approach this full moon. The moon tides are known for creating topwater action, especially around dusk and dawn. So in this week's Striper Season Update, I'm going to walk you through a range of topwater plugs and explain some of my favorite conditions under which to fish them. So when you see a blitz, the first thing you want to do naturally is throw a topwater plug into it. And as long as that plug roughly resembles the size and shape of the bait fish that the striped bass are feeding on, you're going to get a bite. But that's sort of the tip of the iceberg of striper fishing. Most of the time, the fish are not actively feeding on the surface, and they're actually going to be concentrated more towards the bottom. In this situation, fishing topwater plugs can still produce, but you have to be more careful with your plug selection. So right now, I'm going to walk through some of the plugs that I use and the conditions that I use them under. The first plug I want to talk about are small spook style plugs. Now these are like Rebel Jumping Minnows or the Zorus Astri is another great example. And the reason I pull these out of my bag is either I'm fishing early season backwaters or I'm very specifically trying to match a small bait fish. Now this is the Zorus Astri right here. This is a great example of a small spook style plug and it's a great early season plug, backwater plug, and you can fish it on both the traditional walk the dog and paws kind of retrieve, or even like a pencil popper. Now, you can actually fish a lot of these plugs just as you would a pencil popper. They're not going to cast quite as far, but the advantage of these plugs over pencil poppers is that when you fish them on that shaky tip slow retrieve, you can actually make the plug ride with the nose down in the water while still giving that quick walk the dog style cadence that a pencil popper gives you. This is a really realistic presentation, and especially coupled with the rattles that you can usually find in these small plastic spook plugs, it's a great combination. So next up, I'm gonna talk about floating pencil poppers. Now, I'm gonna specify floating here because they're much easier to work than sinking pencil poppers when there's not any side-to-side -side sweep. So this is kind of my all-around plug when I'm fishing boulder fields, when I'm fishing the beach, this is kind of my tried and true top water that is the first plug out of my bag. A great example of one of these plugs is the Gibbs White 2 ounce pencil popper. This is kind of a tried and true plug in my bag that I fish in a lot of different conditions. I fish it in boulder fields, I fish it on the beach, I fish it in rough surf if the wind is directly in my face and there's not a whole lot of side to side sweep, or I fish them in slower stages of the tide at the canal. Now, the reason I like these plugs on the beach so much is that a lot of the times, on the beach, I'm fishing a one to four ounce rated rod, usually between 10 and 11 feet in length. Now that might sound like a really stout, sturdy rod, but when you're wagging the tip of the rod back and forth to work a pencil popper, it doesn't have a whole lot of power. And sometimes when you're fishing those sinking pencil poppers in a situation where there's not a whole lot of sweep, you can actually kind of lose out on some of the action of the plug if that rod isn't stout enough. So that's why when I'm fishing a one to four ounce rod, I'm actually throwing floating pencil poppers specifically. And the Gibbs two ounce and two and three quarter ounce are great plugs in that situation. So when the surf gets really rough or there's a strong crosswind or sweep, that is the situation where I put the pencil popper away and take out a cup face popper like the Super Strike Little Neck Popper or the a Band of Anglers Flying Popper. Now both of these have cupped faces that have a lot more drag through the water than a pencil popper does. And that makes it easier to stay in contact with the plug and work it on the surface than say a pencil popper where you have a lot of slack in the line, you have your rod tip up high, that's gonna create a ton of bow in your line and make it harder to work the plug. Those cup face poppers are gonna have a lot more resistance in the water, you're not gonna get a bow in your line as much, and they're easier to work in those rough conditions and at the end of the day, you want to be working these plugs properly in order to generate bites. So moving up the size spectrum even more, we're going up to the sinking pencil poppers now. There are some small sinking pencils out there, like the Guppy 2 and 3 eighths ounce flat. That's a really popular plug along the canal when tink or mackerel are in, and you're trying to really bomb out long cast. And they range all the way up to even 7 ounces in some of the custom grenade style plugs that you see on the canal. The benefits of them mainly is that you can imitate really big bait fish. You can do a fantastic squid imitation with them, especially if you have an eye on the rear of the plug, and they cast like no other. These are probably the kind of the longest distance casting plugs that you can get. Now let's move on to the big spook style walk the dog plugs like the dock. 
Now the dock is a plug that comes out of my bag as soon as I know that there are big bait fish around. So another situation where I really like to fish this plug is as a search bait. So if I don't know exactly what the fish are going to be feeding on, or I don't know where they are in relation to a piece of cover, I'm going to throw this, and with that low frequency rattle and huge size, it's going to call fish in from a further distance than other plugs would. So these are my experiences with some of the common styles of topwater plugs out there, but we'd love to hear yours. Leave a comment down below and tell us what your favorite topwater plug is.